Hi, I'm, I'm Steve Davis, and uh, my dad, Steve Davis, is with me here, too. I have uh, always wanted to be involved in building an airplane or build an airplane of my own, and this was my opportunity to, uh, to do it with Timber Tiger and with Nick's assistance on the Builder Assist program to be able to build a, a vintage biplane that, um, that has all the scale characteristics of a vintage JM4 Jenny, but with modern internals, modern internal construction, um, and, uh, and the, the ability to have modern safety, modern engine in it, but, uh, preserve the, uh, the legacy of the Jenny biplane seemed like the ideal kit for us. And the build time is attractive, especially with the builder assist program, because you don't have to necessarily plan on spending years and years on this project if you want to, uh, to build it more quickly and efficiently. And I do think that we we're both impressed with Nick's works that we've seen earlier, including the, the Ryan, the Jenny, and yeah, the Ryan, the Ryan and the Jenny, uh, the Speedster. We've seen the work that Timber Tiger does, and it just impressed us uh, the thoroughness of it um, and the uh, you know the attention to detail. And I've learned how to rivet, um, how to you know take uh, and trim gussets and uh, build control surfaces here. And in just two days, we've learned a lot of skills and how to block things out on a table and the order of construction, kind of the, the big thing is the order of construction, the order of having to do things in a certain order so that you don't get ahead of yourself. So it's been hugely helpful to me to get me started thinking about the project, which when you look at the whole project at first, it seems overwhelming, but when you start taking it apart at a time like this, it, it helps. So I would add one thing, and that is that uh, we both gained, gained some experience and comfort with aircraft components that because I've owned a Cardinal RG for 15 years and we ended up putting a new engine in it. Yeah. And we've been involved in that type of stuff, but it's it's a whole different step than than assembling starting and building, starting and building yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. A lot of confidence uh, that comes from this. I mean I wouldn't say I want to go out on my own and do everything yet. I still definitely need assist, but Simple things like I've drilled holes in things all my life at home working on projects or working on a project for the car But drilling holes in aluminum is a little different than drilling holes in steel and so I learned all these various um, Nuances about drilling holes and using different equipment drill stops and things to protect the hole that I didn't know that are sort of aviation specific Construction techniques that I now know that I wouldn't have known two days ago, and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more. I'm just at the very beginning of this, but uh, yeah, I feel like uh, it's a huge confidence builder to have the assistance and to be, uh, you know, whether you get that assistance on the phone or, or in person, uh, it's invaluable help to, uh, but to actually be there hands-on and be able to do a little bit, if you can even do a little bit with, uh, with the company assistance, it's an amazing help because for me, I didn't, I came to this kind of not knowing how to do any of this. You know, it's kind of exciting because you can sort of choose which projects, like we were talking about this morning uh, with you, is we can choose which projects we want to go into next. All right, so this is the Jenny rudder. We are laying this out on the table. Um, you'll notice the footprints all over the table. You'll notice I'm standing on the table. I don't necessarily recommend that. It's not exactly the safest thing to do. But the reason I'm doing that is because over here in this corner, I noticed that the tube didn't want to, no matter what I did, it didn't want to sit at exactly the location the plans show right there. And that's fine. We're about three-eighths of an inch off. So what I'm doing on the table is I'm looking up here to make sure that we have a curvature that, first off, doesn't look like it has any kinks in it. Okay. And then I'm also looking to make sure that it has that Jenny profile that we want, all right? Because when you're bending this tube, this trailing edge tube, and again, we bend it here at the factory, but you've got to do some tweaking on it. When you're doing that tweaking, it's difficult to get it to go exactly where you want, all right? No matter how much you work on it. And that's fine. We're not worried about, you know, we're not building a rocket ship here. We're building a Jenny. Um, it's one step above an ultralight. So... We're just worried about the way it looks. The next step, of course, is going to be to cut the ribs to length. And when we cut these ends here, you can see I just cut it flat. I didn't actually create a curved miter that goes around that 
tube there, that smaller tube. Um, this gets gusseted, so that flat cut is plenty, all right? So this mark on the top, that Sharpie, if you look, that's to the top dead center of the tube as it is laying on the table. Paint sticks are being used as shims because the, ha the that's a half inch tube right there around the back. And then we have a three quarter inch spar here. So, you know, that's a quarter inch diameter difference and one eighth inch radius difference. So we're shimming everything up. And um, once we go to mate this unit to the um, vertical fin, the vertical stabilizer with the hinge barrels. Um, those hinge barrels are going to raise it up another sixteenth inch. Oh, you can see how dirty my hands are. They're going to raise it up another sixteenth inch. So we'll have to shim it. Um, probably with some popsicle sticks is what we use because those are about a those are about a sixteenth inch thick. So one more thing. You may have seen a pencil here in the video. Um, that's for drawing the layout on the table. And even then, I should be using a pen. Don't use a pencil on your aluminum parts, okay? Or even your steel for that matter. The graphite causes corrosion issues in your parts, so don't use a pencil on, on parts. Use Sharpies or pens. All right, so we have the, the rudder spar back in the fixture here. This is the trailing edge curvature. Now we're gonna start installing these gussets. You can see that I've drawn top dead center on the spar and on the trailing edge. This is the gusset that goes there. We want to see those lines through the rivet holes. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that one first on the tube. I'll drill it, and then I'll mark this one on the tube and drill that. We'll clico it with silver clicos, and then we'll use the gusset as a template to drill the remaining holes. And we'll do that for all the gussets all the way around this. One thing that's smart to do is to mark your gusset on the table and on the outer face of the gusset itself. So if you're priming your parts, you can do a whole bunch of these gussets at one time, number side down, and then once that's primed, you can come back here and know, because you didn't prime over the number, that it, where it goes. Video, yeah, you're in the video now. <laughs> So this is the rudder upside down. What I'm doing is I've marked this tube here, top dead center, and I'm going to trace a line, just a straight line. It doesn't have to be a perfect miter on this because it's gusseted, um, where I want to cut this, all right? It's hard to do this with one hand. Do you want me to hold it? All right, so now nah, I got it. What I'll do is I'll walk this over to the bandsaw, cut that little section off, and then you burr it. And then, of course, this gusset here will go on there. And just so you know, to mark this line, you can use a piece of U-channel aluminum from Home Depot. And all you do is you hold this. Can you hold that in there? We'll do a little demo. Actually, you want to just go ahead and do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And go ahead and just trace from end to end with the Sharpie. At any point? I mean, is it in just, the proper position? Yeah, at any know? point. Yeah. Okay. It's just for demo. Go all the way down the tube. And then now you can see you've got that perfect straight line all the way down it. So when you're marking your top dead center, that's how you do it. And the top dead center is a good thing to do, too, because especially here, you know, we had this angle coming in on the tube. If this tube twisted, if we bumped it by accident, we would know that it got twisted. Right. So that's the whole point of doing that. Another good reason to do the top dead center is now I can make sure that my tube isn't off center when I cut it. I can get that Sharpie line right up top and cut there and know that my cut line is exactly where I wanted it. There's the cut there. That's rough. I have to deburr it still. But that's as good as that needs to be. This gusset's going to do the work. All right, so here is where computer modeling and reality clash. <laughs> Which happens often. Yeah, I've got this gusset on the top of the rudder here. I've got this hole drilled on top dead center of this rib. And 
what I'm seeing is this angle is not exactly perfect. And that's because this tube wants to take its own shape and we have to let it do that to a degree. Okay, so it doesn't exactly match the computer model. So, spin this out of the way here so you can see. I opted to put this hole more or less on top dead center of this trailing edge tube. And what that allows us to do is once we drill this, we can gently tap this over the round tube with a mallet and get that hole at a slightly, um, I don't know what you'd call it, off canter angle. Um, and that's fine. So we're going to be, uh, regardless of whether it's straight or not on all these gussets, we're going to be tapping each gusset down around this tube to make it, you know, a nice pretty finish when it's done, something that hides well under the fabric. So doing this before drilling isn't really that huge of a deal. So I just tap this over with a mallet, just gently. And now you can see we can actually get this in there. And it's going to look fine, especially once we get this tapped over, like we have to do anyway to keep the fabric pretty there. So what we don't want to see, and, and this tube is half inch, so it's going to be pretty impossible, or close to impossible. But what we don't want what we don't want to see is if this same scenario happened on the other side, that these two holes were too close together. Again, the the hole distance from center to center on holes, the rule is two times or sorry, from center of the hole to an edge is two times the diameter of the hole. Two times, okay, minimum distance. Minimum, Okay. yeah, minimum. Again, this is a half inch trailing edge tube, so we'd have to really screw up somehow. I mean, to the point we'd really need to be reinvestigating the usability of these parts. Rebending a new tube. Yeah, we'd have to really screw up bad to actually get those holes too close together on that side of the tube. Okay. All right, we've got one side of this thing clecoed together. We've got all the gussets in place. You can see the hinge barrels are not yet on the spar, and that's fine. We don't necessarily need those now. All we're trying to do is get, um, you know, we had these wooden blocks on this side. We had to move those out of the way so we can uh, create the appropriate spacing between this spar and the vertical spar. Um, and the reason is because we need to make sure we have a nice visual uh, transition from leading edge to trailing edge right there. Now, I took off a lot of blocks here, and this thing's just kind of free floating now. I've got it so that I can just press the spar this way and then press the ribs up. And the reason I did that is because this thing is going to flex. We don't want to finish, we don't want to make an assumption that this is going to be the same exact shape as it was when it was clamped down to the table perfectly rigid because it's not there are some stresses in this trailing edge tube here and we want to see first off if we get any um you know any ribs pulling away from the blocks you know if they're if they're kind of starting to tilt down which in this case they're not because there's not too much tension on that but also, we want this thing to have its own natural shape as we start leading into the vertical fin here. That way we don't have, you know, a, a vertical fin and then a rudder. We want vertical fin rudder. Nice, smooth transition. So we took all the pressure off of it. What, we're, what we'll do now is go ahead and draw out the vertical now. And we'll lay out the vertical and build that. And then once that's all done, what we'll do is we'll uh, do our you know, take these gussets off, do our deburring, spot prime just the area that the gussets go, and then we'll rivet this one side completely. Then we'll flip it over, make everything, make sure everything is shimmed off the table appropriately again, and then we'll drill the other side and do the same, okay? So that's why it's important to have a flat table, uh, so you could do the other side kind of free-floating um, and let this, you know, kind of guide you it's, itself. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that next.